You know, no one, when Louis DeJoy was before Congress, before the Senate, no one asked this question. This is making me crazy. Check this out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Duck, 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 duck. Oh, there's ducks all over the beach. Oh, oh, we're on the air. Hi, hi. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, that, uh, happy Friday, first of all. TGIF, Shabbat Shalom, Juma Mubarak. Uh, the hearings this morning where Louis DeJoy was, um, I was going to say being grilled, but uh, it was more like he was being slathered in olive oil, uh, hopefully in preparation for being grilled on Monday, um, were astonishing to me, uh, you know, setting aside streams of obscenities and things like that. Um, in particular, because nobody talked about the elephant in the room. I, I, you know, maybe I missed it. I, there were parts of, of, the, uh, of the hearings that I didn't, that I, you know, that I missed. Um, probably not more than 10 minutes of it, but, but thereabouts. But I didn't hear a single senator say, is this part of a plan to privatize and sell off the post office? I didn't hear a single senator say that. And then Rand Paul comes along and says words to the effect of, uh, Postmaster General DeJoy, if you were a venture capitalist, what do you need us to do in the Senate so that you could privatize the post office? And DeJoy was like, oh, thank you very much for that question. Yes, there's a lot we could. I mean, this is what's going on here. This is not, you know, what's, what's becoming very, very obvious. And, and I was just frankly horrified that not a single Democratic senator got it or talked about it this morning. And again, if I missed it, please correct me. It's Anything Goes Friday. We'll be taking your calls uh, for this hour. Next hour, second hour of our program today, Congressman uh, uh, Ro Khanna is going to be with us. He represents Silicon Valley. He's the vice chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Uh, he's a guy that many people are saying uh, should be seriously considered to replace Kamala Harris as California's senator. And uh, and he is, I believe, I'm 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 pretty sure, but I, you know, I, again, I, 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 <laughs> trust but verify, right? I believe that he is on the committee that on Monday is going to be grilling the Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy. Uh, and, and then our third hour is Anything Goes Friday. We'll be taking your calls again as well. Um, we, you know, we may have a guest in here, here and there, but I, I, so far no plans uh, other than Congressman Connor. But the thing that made me crazy, and I kept yelling at the TV, was, you know, ask him if he's trying to privatize the post office. And then the other thing, that, the other question that I kept yelling at the TV was, you know, I thought that the questioning should go like this. If I was, if I was a United States senator and I was questioning the Postmaster General, I would say, uh, you know, General DeJoy, let me, let me think about how to phrase this. Um, the, the Department of Education lost $63 billion last year. Um, how do we get the Department of Education to start running like a business and make a profit? How do we get the Defense Department to start running like a business and make a profit? How do we get the EPA to start running like a business and make a profit? How do we, how do we get the Social Security Administration to start running like a business and make a profit? Actually, the Social Security Administration does. It, <laughs> they've, got a, they've got a trust fund. Um, but it's not being run like a business, thank God. Because businesses, you know, in order to run something like a business, you've got to be able to skim profit off the top. You've got to be able to skim money into the pockets of the shareholders. That's the whole point of a business. And I, I was just boggled by the fact that nobody pointed this out. Sir, which government agencies are run like a business? Which government agencies are even asked to break friggin' even? Please identify one federal agency that has to break even every year or that has to show a profit, that's designed to show a profit. It, it's, it's crazy. I mean, the simple reality here is that these guys have been trying to privatize the post office since the Reagan administration. And in 2006, as a result of millions of dollars in bribes, explicitly, specifically, from the American Bankers Association 
and Citigroup. Congress, in that legislation that mandated that the post office set aside six and a half billion dollars a year for people who haven't even been born yet for their retirement uh, health care benefits, Congress, the Republicans in Congress in 2006 also explicitly outlawed the post office from offering any services beyond what they are, offer right now. And in fact, in their in their lobbying, the postal the the American Banking Association, they they said, quote. Our members remain very concerned about allowing the Postal Service to offer non-postal products, including banking services. So let's set up the post office to fail. And then let's stand around and go, oh, look at it failed. I guess we need to give it to, you know what, Charles Koch? No, no, uh, Citibank? No, oh, I know, Louis DeJoy's company. His, his, you know, billionaire Louis DeJoy, let's just give the Postal Service to his company. After all, he's putting up with all this crap from Democratic senators. I mean, they're all acting like they think that all of a sudden Donald Trump last month or three months ago or thereabouts decided we're going to screw with the post office to screw up the elections. No, what's been going on is since 2006, since the George W. Bush administration, Republicans have been working to privatize the post office in order to set it up for privatization, just like they did, by the way, with, uh, you know, uh, KP service and, uh, well, a whole spectrum of military services in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, you know, just, I mean, pick your, pick your poison, right? They, they, this is uh, just like they did with private prisons. Oh, let's break them. Let's make them fail. Let's underfund them. And then let's say, oh, you know, we really need to privatize this. We need the efficiencies of the free market. This is nuts. The Postal Service is not a business. Let's be very clear about this. It's part of the infrastructure of this nation that was established by the Constitution that was written in Philadelphia in 1787. In the room was America's first postmaster general. He had held that job for a whole year in 1787 when he sat in on, on the, uh, the Constitutional Convention to write the Constitution, Ben Franklin. Oh, but let's just take the thing apart. Take out the sorting machines, turn them into scrap. Pitney Bowes and the U.S. Postal Service were major lobbyers, lobbyists for that 2005 piece of legislation. That, two, that well, 2006 is when it passed. This is just so wrong. And, you know, what's happening? What's the result of this? And by the way, you can call on any topic you want. As I said, it's anything goes Friday, but I just have to get this out of my system. Um, Steve Mnuchin, this piece in the New York Times today by uh, Nicholas Fandos, Alan Rappaport, Ken Vogel, and uh, Katie Edmondson. Former postal governor tells Congress Mnuchin politicized the Postal Service. So they were already in the process of destroying the Postal Service and had been since 2006 in order to set it up for privatization. And then Trump comes along and goes, hey, we got the Postal Service limping. So let's point to that and say, how can you, how can you trust this, this dysfunctional Postal Service to handle your ballots? That's essentially what he's saying. And we're going to you know, withhold any extra money from them because, hey, they're losing money so that we can't have vote by mail. So Trump was just, you know, jumping on the bandwagon. And as I said, I, I don't think a single senator mentioned a word about that. 4,800 uh, chicks shipped to Maine farmers through the U.S. Postal Service have arrived dead in the recent weeks. Pauline Henderson, who owns Pine Tree Poultry in New Sharon, Maine, told the newspaper she was shocked last fall when all of the 800 chicks sent to her from a hatchery in Pennsylvania were dead. Usually they arrive every three weeks like clockwork, she said. Out of 100 birds, typically you have one or two that die in shipping. 